Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my pre-calculus tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how logarithmic functions can help solve equations that have x in the exponent. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so I have a big tutorial on logarithms as well as Euler's number, and I'll put it in the description, but I'm going to mainly focus on just solving equations using the logarithms in this video. Just a brief overview. Okay, and as I'm sure you're well aware, exponents tell us how many times to multiply a number times itself. So for example, two to the third is equal to two times two times two, which of course is equal to eight. Logarithms, however, tell us what the exponent is. So two question mark is equal to eight simply becomes log two eight which is equal to question mark. And of course, in this situation, this would be equal to three. So if you would want to go and find out what n is in the situation in which this would be equal to three, you could just go and find that n is equal to two to the third power, which of course is equal to eight. Likewise, if you had this problem, this of course would work out to two. And in a situation in which we have this problem, this works out to 25 to the n, which is equal to five, which then becomes two, 25, which becomes five. And in this situation, we would find that log to the 25th of five is equal to one half. Now there are different types of logarithms. For example, we have the base 10 logarithm, which just simply tells us how many times do we use 10 to get a value. And this is known as the common logarithm. And you could write it like this. And in this situation, this would be equal to two. You could also write it just simply with ln. Now the other common type of logarithm, we have the common logarithm, which is base 10. We also have the natural logarithm. And what it tells you is how many times we use Euler's number in a multiplication to get a result. And now what I wanna do, if you want more information on all the awesome things you can do with logarithms and such, like I said, down below in the description, you can find a video that is solely based off of that. But now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to use logarithmic functions to help solve equations in which you have x as an exponent. So let's say you have a function, which is two to the x. And you can see an example right here. This first graph is exactly what that graphs out to. And of course that would work out to being these type of values. So if we have negative one, zero, one, and two, this becomes one half, which is equal to two to the negative one, one, two, and four. And just to refer to what we had talked about in the previous video, in this situation, the domain would be negative infinity to infinity, while the range would be zero to infinity. Likewise, you can see with this graph right here, this would be an example of this function in which we have two with a negative exponent. In that situation, we would just reflect our other results about the y-axis. Now let's come in here and just start solving a whole bunch of these problems. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take log three, x is equal to four. How exactly are we gonna solve that? Well, this is just gonna become three to the power of four, x, and in this situation, x is going to have a value of 81. Let's solve more. Log two x equal to negative three. This is going to be two exponent negative three equal to x, and in this situation, x is going to be equal to one over two to the third, which is going to be equal to one eighth. Continue, let's solve a whole bunch more here. Log to three, 27. X 
to find that, we go 3x is equal to 27. And of course, in this situation, x is going to have a value of 3. I'm just going to continue just solving a whole bunch of these problems. So log to the third, just so you can see an example of just about everything you would see. There's x again. This becomes 3x equal to 1 over 9. And 3x can be converted into 9 with a negative exponent. Then what we can do is transform this in 3 to the 1, x equal to 3 squared negative 1. And in this situation, anytime you have exponential expressions with an equal base, so for example, if a x is equal to a y, then you can state that x is equal to y. And so we can do that. We can just simply change this to 3x is equal to 3, negative 2. And in that situation, x is going to have a value of negative 2. Let's solve another one. Let's say we have log x 27 equal to 3. Well, in this situation, we know that x to the third 27 and x is going to be equal to 3. And just going to try, let's work with some fractions here, just so you can see how they work out. And the best way to review all this is after you watch it to rewind back to the beginning and then pause your way through the video and try to solve the problems. And once you get to the point where you can solve all of them without any mistakes, you have mastered this. So this will be equal to 16. And we're going to have to do some messing around here. Basically, I want to raise both to the 3 fourths. So I'm going to say x 4 over 3 and raise this to 3 fourths. And the 16 in this situation is going to be equal to root of 4 16 to the third. And if any of this is confusing to you, watch the previous videos where I work through all these different problems. And this is going to become 4. And I can simplify this down to 2 to the 4th. And this ends up being equal to x is equal to 2 to the 3rd because these cancel out, which of course is equal to 8. Another rule that is very useful is let's say you have log a and b. This can be rewritten as either the common log over common log a like this or log, which would be the natural log, b over a. And why is that? Well, these are actually equal to each other. Let's say we have log 10 and log 2. This is equivalent to our common log with the same exact values. And if we go and work out the math on these, you're going to see that while these values are different, whenever we divide them proportionally, they are the same. And both end up simplifying down to 3.32. All right. Another rule that is useful is that the sum of the logarithms with equal bases are going to equal the logarithm of the product of the terms. Sounds confusing. Let me show you an example, and it won't be. All right, so log x squared plus, this is the common log, of course, plus log of y. This is going to be, remember I said, the sum of the logarithms equal the product. Well, that's what it does. This becomes ln 3x squared y. And likewise, the difference of two logs with the same base is going to equal the log of the quotient. So in that situation, if we have log x squared minus log, this is going to end up being equal to x squared over 3. And let's go and combine them. So let's say that we have 
log x squared minus log of 3 and log of y. Well, that's just going to simply, we're going to combine both of those rules and get an answer of x squared y over 3. And let's go and do one more. It's very important to remember that logs and exponents cancel out each other. So for example, if we have log 10 to the third, this is exactly the same or gives you a value of three. All right, so there you go. I just wanted to really focus in on solving equations using exponents and logs so that you really solidify that. And we're pretty much done with pre-calculus. Uh, like I said, it's probably important if you're not very, very well aware of how logarithms and Euler's number work, look at the video in the description. It's a little bit of this video with a whole bunch more that's really cool. And also there is conic sections, which I've already made a video about. I also put that in the description. And the rest of this tutorial, which is probably gonna be two more videos, is going to focus on all of the trigonometry you need for calculus. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.